Good morning, folks. Switcher here. What does Switcher have in store for you this morning? A novelty, or something I have never done, and I doubt that I'll ever do again, an update to an inbox review. Uh, as we discussed it during the inbox review, uh, this kit was chosen because it had massed, uh, it had uh, lots of stowage and so on and so forth, and I wanted to build something different, and uh, just because uh, it's nice to build something different. And uh, as I was going through this, and I started looking, uh, I st later on, I, I looked at the instructions at the inbox review, and then going, wow. And uh, so here we have it all laid out. This is all stowage, okay? Um, there's other things that came in the kit. We'll discuss that. But anyways, um, we have our ration boxes here. If I can get my pointy stick out. We have our ration boxes. We have two crates. We've got two oil drums, absolutely wonderful. We're going to go into this detail. This is why I want to, I wanted to do this. Uh, we have our spare road wheels and all that good stuff. Uh, two jerry cans, clearly marked uh, G for gas. Uh, six rucksacks, uh, spare tracklings. Uh, we have two sections of fours over here, and there's a section in the box. Uh, these are your summer cleats, and they have winter cleats as well. Okay, so. Uh, road wheels, uh, like we did in the inbox review, they either got plain Jane or they got the sprocketed type, and I'm going to go with the build with the sprocketed type. We've got uh, 850 cal ammo boxes and 830 cal ammo boxes, four ammo pouches and four uh, helmets. <clears throat> well, you could say, well, yes, Witcher, that's nice. <laughs> uh, what I want to draw your attention to and where I got fiddly uh, with my Nashorn build is because the amount of cleanup and how things went together and the lining up problems because of just the way that they molded stuff, okay? Little tiny teats and little tiny holes don't make for good construction as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't know what the camera's going to pick up. We might have to do some autofocus here. And we're going to pick up a jerry can and uh, see uh, what we can see. I might have to do some autofocus, like I said. And we're going to do that momentarily. And see if it's going to pick it up. There we go, folks. Seamless. There's a little cleanup to do there, but it's relatively seamless. Um, on the side here. Now, this is where... Um, there we go. That's minimal cleanup, okay, mind you, my Micromock uh, shears uh, do play uh, dividends on that, but uh, absolutely, focus pig, there we go, absolutely beautiful, okay, uh, shown down the bottom here, we see uh, they line up and so on and so forth, and this is, that's just the jerry can. Uh, we'll take a uh, ration box, uh, same thing. These were cleaned up. There was minimal cleanup. Let's put this against the black background, and she'll focus in on, on, for, on it for us. <laughs> Not easy to do. Let's, uh, let's take another set of tweezers here. Okay. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. Minimal. That's the bottom. Okay. Nice fit, nice and square. Uh, this is a four-piece construction. Uh, but it went together so friggin' well. It, things line up. Okay. And that's the indication of good molding. And I just dropped that one on the floor. Thank God it's big enough that the carpet monster won't eat it. But, um... When we look at the oil drum, there's the top. Fit is 100% perfect, okay? She's nice and round. And then when I said the oil drums were seamless, we'll try to get that in shot. Not easy to do. There we go. That seam is barely, barely visible, okay? And... Uh, a quick sanding with uh, uh, our flex sanders and all that. We'll get rid of that. Uh, the ammo boxes. A 
once again. That is a, a three-piece construction. No fit issues whatsoever. And these haven't been cleaned up. I'm just to show you how minimal cleaning is required. And that's at the bottom of the ammo can. Uh, that's the 50 cal. 30 cal, when we get into some really small stuff, focus you pig, uh, same thing. Okay. Uh, the clean out is eh, not easy to do here. Focus. Steady. There you go. There's a clean out at the bottom. Okay. No fit issue. Everything aligns perfectly. Uh, when we look at the spare tracks. Okay. There we go. Uh, the injection pin marks can be sanded down versus having to fill them out. We are going to look at the uh, the rucksacks. A little better view. There we go. Okay. Uh, the only clean out that had to be done is a little tiny at the bottom that has been done. Um, helmets. There we go. Uh, ammo pouches, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, beautiful, beautiful stowage. Um, it, I decided just to see how much we had, and then I said, well, let's let's put this together. And the jerry can, this has got to be the, the easiest jerry can I've ever put together, okay? So we're going to move that aside, okay? And uh, I want to talk about my biggest pet peeve okay with regards to the dragon instructions and I know that uh, they uh, they don't um, the dragon kits do come with a booklet now but even that I mean I looked at my other instructions okay and uh, where I thought this was uh, rather nice okay as far as uh, instructions go and so on and so forth this is rather large okay um, it's known as a pictogram, for the lack of a better word. Okay, no clear indications. Uh, like I said, we the um, things, uh, the marks that where this stuff go very, very, very minute. Okay, small, uh, tedious. Even with geek goggles, it was hard to to figure out. And it's a it's a pictogram. Okay, um, I had difficulties throughout the build. You had to read ahead three or four times, and and it's. It wasn't fun, okay? Um, when we get into the gun assembly, things weren't clear, okay? This part here, that was not clear, okay? Where it uh, it hooks up, it just shows D19 there. Let's, uh, where are we here? Where's my big fat finger? There we go. Eh, eh. That part there, okay? It just shows it there. How does it get attached and so on and so forth? And that is not clear, okay? Now... We're going to zoom out here because we're doing instructions. We're just going to... Uh, we'll take some non-complicated stuff, okay? And uh, we'll have a look at that. My desk is a little cluttered because I've been working. There we have it. And uh, this is what we're accustomed to, okay? Very, very clear. Uh, you have all kinds of notes throughout the instructions, okay, on who's who in the zoo. Here's a definite uh, description, okay? We can either use uh, the A1 wheels, okay, or we could use the H1 wheels, okay? It's an option. One's a plain Jane and one is a sprocketed, uh, and they tell you how many you got to build and your paint colors are all there and da 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 Okay, uh, what gets glued, okay, what doesn't get glued. Uh, no big deal where you have a brush with a drop on it or a cross on the brush. It's, it's neither here nor there. Instructions are clear, and they actually, they're through drawings. If we look at what's happening over here, and they say, don't glue that, because that's a, your return bogey, and all that good stuff. And it shows what connects with what, okay, throughout the build. 
Uh, here's another example down here. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, these are your mufflers. Okay, and they show exactly where they go. Okay, we have deep indentations to receive these parts, not just freaking glued on the surface. They, they've got, uh, it's like a mortise and tenon joint for the lack of a better word. Why would workers use a mortise and tenon joint greater glue surface? Okay, if you've got a one millimeter by three millimeter piece that sticks on the surface, you have a three, a three square millimeter uh, gluing surface. Now, if you have a one by three by one millimeter deep, okay, so you've got uh, three millimeters, nine millimeters, you got 11 millimeters of uh, contact surface. Uh, sorry about that. No, you have uh, three, three, six, you got eight millimeters of contact surface, okay, when it's being glued to the part. That is well thought out molding as far as I'm concerned. The greater surface area, the, the stronger the glue joint, okay. Uh, then assemblies. Um, uh, you don't guess, okay? And they all have their their holes uh, to receive their their uh, their stuff, okay? Here we're just talking pioneer tools. Insignificant. They each have their place that they go, and they just fit in there. And you can do a clean build because it's just a matter of getting that part in there, giving it the little glue, okay? Because it's not surface mount, okay? There is. Uh, uh, it's a mortise and tenon joint, okay, which is great. Uh, here's a, uh, a clear depiction of the spare track assemblies that go on the rear of the tank, okay, and they show you exactly this side has got holes, okay, and you have pins, and you line them up, and you see exactly how these things are done, okay, and they tell you make two of these, okay. Dragon still did that. Don't get me wrong and all that good stuff. It's just... Uh, here is a, uh, a stowage rack, okay, uh, uh, in the back, and it is clear how things go. No, no second guessing, nothing, okay. <clears throat> uh, same thing for the front assembly. It doesn't matter. Um, this is not as complicated a build as uh, uh, the Nash one. I'm not going to deny that. But if we take, uh, if we look at the 50 cal here. Okay, once you've built one, uh, you pretty much build them all. But it is clear on how parts go together, not just a pictogram. They've actually taken the time, and you can see the part numbers, okay? Um, that is all I had. Uh, it was more to discuss about the stowage than anything else. But at the same time, going through the instructions after the fact, I discovered that, wow, man, uh, yeah. I was frustrated with my Nash horn build, and then I'm looking at this, and I'm going like, why is this so simple? And the ease of construction of the stowage, okay? Um, I believe there's a Jerry can on the Nash horn. There's something. Uh, uh, ease of build, sorry. This is a 1987 kit, okay? Could have even newer than that. Somebody that knows all the history about these things uh, can tell. But for something that was made in 1987, okay? Um, quite impressed with it. Um, and anybody that uh, cares to take a look at it, uh, they will be too, okay? Uh, uh, lots of stowage. Uh, some of it, uh, if you look at the... Uh, uh, we'll zoom in, in on the... Uh, the stowage pictorial here at the bottom. Let's get up there. Okay. Um, it is stowage intensive. Okay, no doubt about that. Uh, the downside to that, so when we look at it, uh, we don't have to go around the, the, the second time around the turret. Okay. Uh, when we look at it, I mean, we're covering off the, uh, the engine intakes, which is something that... Uh, interferes with uh, the performance of your engine so we're not quite sure if actually this stuff or did they have did they mount things uh, off the uh, uh, the engine I've seen some of these tanks build up okay where there was a tarp over and covered the, the, the entire intake so you couldn't even see in there so that that would not be happening okay but uh, massive massive uh, stowage here um, <clears throat> I might uh, build some uh, some baskets. Uh, to accept some of this stuff uh, in other places, I've seen that in the, in the, uh, 
pictures and so on and so forth, how this stowage was uh, distributed a little bit better instead of just having on the engine deck. Uh, the other thing, too, is that we had passengers that used to ride uh, on the engine deck and so on and so forth. So that was an update uh, to the uh, to my review, probably the one and only, and I uh, hope it was insightful. Thanks for watching. Switcher, signing off.